All right, the periodic table. Today we're just gonna go through um, some of the basics. I highly recommend that you pause the video here and you go get a periodic table, either printing the one from the announcements or if you already have one um, somewhere, that's fine too. But just a periodic table to write on. If you don't have a printer and you don't have one that you can write on, even taking a piece of paper and just outlining the periodic table, um, just doing like an outline here, like, uh, like going over, going down, going over, going down, just so you have an outline so you can kind of write on the outside of the periodic table. It's going to be helpful for you to organize these notes like in your mind. Okay, so periodic table. So it was originally uh, not, not created. There was like a rush to get to the periodic table, who was going to be the creator of the periodic table. And um, Dmitry Mendeleev came up with pretty much the closest type of periodic table we have today. If you go through these uh, elements like in the first column, second column, they tend to match the ones on the ones we have today. Uh, so there's hydrogen here, lithium, sodium, potassium. If you go um, to our current periodic table, you have hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, and so forth. That pretty much goes all the way across. And then every once in a while, he had blanks. That's what these dashes are. And later, we discovered elements that went into those blanks. So he was able to predict um, missing elements. That's what you guys did in the activity last week where you were arranging all the shapes by their numbers and their colors and you left blanks because and you could tell what was going to go there based on patterns well that's what he did he could tell that there was a missing element here because he was missing a size like a weight and um he was also but he knew that an element needed to go there because it had uh all the columns that he created had similar chemical and physical properties so for example, we now know today, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, they all have one valence electron, uh, which means that they all have certain physical and chemical properties. They're going to bond a certain way because they only have one valence electron um, and they have um, similar properties, metallic properties, stuff like that. Um, so our modern periodic today is most closely resembled to Dmitry Mendeleev. So that's who we credit with the creation of the periodic table. Um, Mosley is the other scientist that really contributed to um, periodic law. He came through and assigned all of the elements, um, numbers, which are their atomic number. Right here, you can see it on chlorine. Chlorine is 17. And the atomic number happens to be the number of protons. And it's the identity of the element. So when you, if you were to say element 17, everybody would know you meant chlorine because it's the only element with 17 protons. If it has 16, it's a different element. If it has 18, it's a different element. So the number of protons identifies the element, not the mass, um, because this is an average. It doesn't actually identify one single thing. It identifies an average of a group of atoms. So the atomic number is the only thing that identifies the element. That means if I gave you a bunch of information and asked you to look up the element, the only number that you would need is this atomic number. The horizontal rows on the periodic table we call periods. Uh, everybody in the same row has the same amount of energy levels, and then it coordinates to the period that they're in. So period one is energy level P one, period two is energy level two, period three is energy level three, and so forth. Um, let me go to the periodic table real quick. So that question asked for manganese, or what did it, did it ask for? Um, magnesium. What period is magnesium in? Well, this is period one. This is period two. It is in period three. Oh, that is a typo right here. <laughs> let me um, fix that for you guys real quick so that you have the right number. Period three. There we go. And... Uh, for all atoms on the entire periodic table, the protons equal the number of electrons. So if I go back to this, actually, let's go back one. Here we go. So chlorine, the chlorine atom, because it has 17 protons, it also has 17 electrons. Ions are where the electrons change. But for atoms, protons equal electrons. The vertical groups we call families or groups, the vertical columns. 
Um, we call them families because they have similar physical and chemical properties, and that's because they have the same number of valence electrons. Um, that means the outermost electrons are the same. Everybody in group one has one valence electron. They all have different number of protons, so they have different number of electrons, but on the very last uh, energy level, the most outer energy level, the farthest from the nucleus, uh, has the same amount of valence electrons. So group one has one, group two has two. We skip the transition metals because they kind of change, but if you go over to boron, right here, group 13, they have three valence electrons, four valence, five valence, six valence, seven and eight. So you can count across the periodic table, one, two, skip a few, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. The only exception there is helium. Helium only has two because it is, uh, it only has two electrons total um, and only two electrons fit on that first energy level. So it's the only exception to that little counting rule. Um, the, all of the vertical, well, not all of them, but some of the vertical columns have family names, again, because they all share similar traits, similar characteristics, the same way your families have like the same last names or something like that. This, these have the same names too. So group one here, we call alkali metals. You might want to, um, write that on your periodic table. Group one is alkali metals. Group two here is alkaline we call them alkaline metals or alkaline earth metals. You hear that a lot. Um, if you skip all the way over here to group 17, we call those halogens. And then group 18, we call noble gases. So those are like the four families that you need to remember. And then again, all these ones in the middle are called transition metals. So how many valence electrons would nitrogen have here? So if you want to number on your periodic table, you can. If you think you can remember it, that's fine too. But again, one, two, skip a few, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So how many does nitrogen's group have? Nitrogen's group has five valence electrons. The next says, how much does oxygen's group have? So again, one, two, skip a few, three, four, five, six. So oxygen's group has six valence electrons, seven, eight. Um, this is also something you might want to write on your periodic table is um, there are two uh, sort of um, two trends that we're going to focus on. Um, one is electronegativity and the other one is size and they are actually opposite each other. So you might want to draw arrows that um, follow B and C here. So increasing as you go across the periodic table and decreasing as you go down. Electronegativity is the ability to attract, to attract electrons. So if I go back just to, um, whoops, backwards, there we go, to this periodic table, as we go across the periodic table, electronegativity increases. So that's the ability to attract an electron. Here, we're all the goal for all of them is to have eight. So fluorine here can gain one and get eight, or it could lose seven and be like helium. Losing seven is harder than gaining one. So this one wants to attract electrons. It is the most electronegative. Here, francium down in this corner, it has one valence electron and it can either get rid of that one to be like radon or it can gain seven. Well, getting rid of one is easier. So it's not going to attract electrons. It's trying to give them away. So that's going to have very low electronegativity because remember, electronegativity is the ability to attract electrons. Uh, the last thing we want to talk about or I wanted to talk about today was uh, atomic radius. That's the other trend I would like you guys to know. So electronegativity and atomic radius. And this is actually opposite of electronegativity. So the smaller ones are more electronegative. That means we get bigger as we go across. Electronegativity increases as we go from hydrogen over to helium, but size increases as we go from helium to hydrogen. So fluorine here um, is the most electronegative. It's also the smallest. And then if you go across, francium was the least electronegative. It's also the biggest. So as you go down, you get bigger. Um, and then as you go down, you get less electronegative. So least electronegative, but biggest, and then most electronegative, but smallest. So if you can kind of remember those trends, like electronegativity increases going this way from francium to fluorine, and then size increases going from fluorine to francium, you'll be in good shape. 
So those are the two trends I'd like you to know. I'd also like you to know the names of the families. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thanks.